donk. We just ran aground. Just ran aground. Great. And more, more to starboard. Oh, jeez. Okay, we ran aground again. Yeah, we're getting pushed down. Okay. We just ran aground three times. I don't think we're gonna get in here right now. It's like too shallow for us. Brian has just gone with our friends Jeff in his uh, center console, so they're just checking depth now with like our depth sounder. What'd you say? Nine seven. Nine seven. Okay. Okay. Jeff uh, took me in, and I think I found where we can get in now. We we need to go a little bit more to port, so we're gonna try that. And Sierra is not happy about it. Still luck, buddy. That rip and curve in the just seat, I think it's pushing us out. Yeah. Nope. Nope. We're ground. Now the wind is pushing us down, I think, off the channel. The Brian is trying to pivot us around. But it's not nice, we're like slamming on the bottom right now. The feeling of running aground is just absolutely horrific. Okay, we're moving again. Okay, well this is Sally and this is Roger, right? <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Nice and thanks for the too. offer of the dock space. Meet Sally and Roger, an awesome sailing couple that kindly reach out to us on Instagram. Mm. Their swan was headed into the yard for some work, leaving their dock, and most importantly, their incredible workshop open for a Delos work party invasion. Welcome to Lake Ogleton. Thank you, we made it. Well, that was easy. Well, we just had to, we had to push through a little bit of mud, but here we are. Good? I slept pretty good. Yeah, it feels amazing to Have be here. Have you looked outside yet? No. It is gorgeous. This is the charming area of Annapolis, the capital of Maryland. It's a city steeped in history and also happens to be an incredible port for all things boat related. For Delos and crew, it would be the perfect spot to tackle the endless list of boat projects and fix all the things we'd broken on our cruise to Maine. As sometimes happens, we bit off a little more than we could chew and ended up turning a planned two-week stop into a minor refit. Today's project is to get the anchor and the chain off Delos to get it regalvanized. 20 meters down, 80 more to go. The next big thing I've got to do is take out the dive compressor, and then I'd like to see if we can fit it back here. Mission today is the carpets. I've never changed them since I've been on the boat, so they're, they're probably the original. We're going to build a door for the nugget. The whole mattress is like wet. Ah, it just barely fits in like that. I think we actually put this thing back together correctly. So they got us a brand new Genoa here. If you see one strand that moves, that means there's a chance that it's broken. So we're going to be doing the injectors, the injector pump, the raw water pump, the valves, do the timing belt, the timing belt rollers and guides, the engine mounts, change the transmission fluid, replace the exhaust gasket, the exhaust elbow. I love you. I love you too. He basically won't be able to do any of it for about two weeks. Okay, only three more. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to see through that. Boat projects, huh? They're never straightforward. Ah, man. Oh, I feel like we're almost at our 
max capacity of what we could handle. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat adventurizing around the world for the past 10 years. And now we embark on our greatest adventure of all. Come join us as we take to the high seas and travel the world with the newest member of our crew. If you enjoy Delos videos, please subscribe. It's a great way to support our channel. Gonna do a lot of work, um, quite a few things that we want to get done, and uh, I feel like this is the perfect place to do it. I know, I'm excited. I was got really excited when he showed me the boat workshop yesterday. Look at all these tools, and most exciting is this gigantic vise, and this big working table. I'm like in heaven here. I felt a little bit overwhelmed this morning, you know, just like thinking about everything that I want to do. We should make a, a scrum board. Yeah. We'll make a list and then yeah. we'll make our post-it notes. We'll mm -hmm. prioritize stuff and then we'll just go for it. A scrum, or Kanban board as it's sometimes called, is a way to visualize progress in a project. It's an old habit from my software developer days. And I find writing down each individual project helps you to visualize how much work needs to be done and most importantly, prioritize the critical, important, and nice to do if we get done with everything else items. We can start on a few things that I think I can do at the same time. Moving an item to in progress helps you to limit the number of things you work on at the same time, and there's nothing more fulfilling than moving a task to complete. Okay, we're gonna take advantage of being at the dock here and actually plug into power, which is something that we don't do very often. The only problem is Delos is a European boat, so she's 220 volt, 50 hertz, and uh, the dock here is uh, 110 volt, 60 hertz. We have a step-up transformer, which converts the 110 to 220. It's a big one in the engine room. Basically what I do is I have this cable and this goes into the transformer. And then I just have to wire it up to this uh, sacrificial cord I have. And then I connect the wires together, it's single phase. So it's pretty simple. And um, make a nice waterproof connection here. So I don't have any um, heat shrink tubing big enough to go over this, but this stuff is pretty cool. It's a scotch moisture sealing tape. It's not as pretty, but it does keep the moisture out. For now, this will be all right. Boom. Well, we're running off dock power now, but it's 60 cycles instead of 50 cycles. So European power and everywhere else in the world is 50 cycles. It's just the US that's 60 cycles because we're different. Special. Special. Now our AC motors will spin 20% faster. So and that could potentially be bad. That could potentially be bad depending on what it is. But most things like household appliances should work. So that's it. We're off the dock now. No way. That's crazy. You gotta come check this out. I was just taking the trash up. And there's two deer right here. I don't know if it's deer or what. What do you think, Sierra? Look at that beast. This is crazy. Do you see it, Nugs? What is that She's creature? Like there. What is that? It's like a huge dog. <laughs> With horns. <laughs> Duh. Don't get to see that every day. Engine stuff. I'm doing all engine stuff today. Or else. Injectors, Volvo, timing belt, exhaust, gasket. We're all going to get started on that. First thing I think I'll do is I'm going to give the engine room a good cleaning. All right, she's looking pretty clean now. And uh, my first task is I need to remove the raw water pump so that I can see what kind of seal I need to buy. And I need to get the injectors out. I'm starting to get a little bit of black soot on the side of the boat and when I start to get black soot I know that it's a little bit overdue so I'm going to do those and then this here is the uh, raw water pump this is the seal it's leaking so I've got to get this cover off get these guys off and we'll go from there Okay, the uh, water pump came off easy enough. So 
So I've got to clean up this rust and repaint it, but that's all good. I'm going to get one of the injectors out now, and uh, I've done this a few times. I think the most difficult thing is, uh, you know, you're basically opening up the cylinder. And so uh, that's why one of the, the main reasons that I cleaned it is I don't want to get any sort of dirt, paint chips, grease, water, anything like that in there. So I'm going to unscrew the injector. Oh, there we go. And then I'll be able to look at the part number and hopefully order a replacement or take it into a like a boss shop. Okay. Oh yeah, see how the the tip is all carboned up. Okay, one down, three to go. <laughs> Take 96. <laughs> Ahoy Delos Tribe, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Did you know that for about the same price as a cup of coffee, you can actually support us, which makes it possible for us to continue making the videos that we love and the content that you want to watch. So if you want to support the videos, please consider becoming a patron. You will get early access to the videos. You also get to chat with us on mm -hmm. a per more personal level. Uh, and a lot of other juice things. Don't forget the free gear, Casa. There's free oh, Delos gear. Yeah, free Delos gear. That's a good one. <laughs> Seriously, a lot of good stuff in there. So head to patreon.com forward slash svdelos and check it out. That's it. Now back to the show. <laughs> All right, I'm back at it. And the next big thing I've got to do is take out the dive compressor. The reason is there's some stuff I need to service that is actually behind it, which is the uh, transmission gearbox and motor mounts I want to take a look at and make sure they're okay. So I'll pull it out, service it at the same time. I'm just gonna try and wrench it out of here. Like a heavy beast. <sighs> Unzip the Dodger halyard. See if we can give this a go. It's a lot harder to do this by yourself. Kaza took Sierra out of the way because this is no place for a baby right now. Oh boy, what a mission. Okay, it's out. What a beast, huh? That thing needs a little TLC. It's been in there for a long time, done a lot of hard work for us, but I'll get it cleaned up. This box fell off, the control box. I'll get that remounted. And uh, we'll make her good as new. Well, I made pretty uh, major progress yesterday. Let me show you what I've got off the engine. I went pretty deep on it. I just decided to do everything at once. Uh, a pretty major service. So we're gonna be doing the injectors, the injector pump, uh, the raw water pump, probably adjust the valves, uh, do the timing belt, the timing belt rollers and guides, the engine mounts, change the transmission fluid, uh, replace the exhaust gasket, the exhaust elbow, and then the, the tubing. Oh, I gotta show you the tubing. That's probably the craziest thing I found. Look at this. This is the exhaust elbow right after the turbocharger. And this part you can see is corroded, old. It's cast, so it's just falling into pieces. But look at this. So this is the tube that I was telling you that goes between the engine and the water muffler. You're supposed to be able to see through that. Hey, Kaza. Can I show you this? Have I showed you this yet? <laughs> what do you think? No way. Isn't that crazy? That's so scary. It's just yeah. bubbled up. Yeah. And so that's the other side too. So you can see how it's just... What? That's definitely choking the exhaust flow, you know? So that would just impact... Just from the heat? I think so. 
I don't know if this is tubing is as heat resistant as we need it, but I'm gonna have to get a new one of these. I'm glad I found that though. Oh, good job, Kaza. Yeah, getting some stuff off the boat that we haven't used in years. Years. So if I open a cabinet like this and then you touch in here, like in the back, it's hard to see, but my hand becomes damp. And we've had it on like the hatches and stuff, but I haven't realized that it's been so much inside all the cabinets and everywhere. Quite a few things are is destroyed. Uh, a lot of Sierra's books, some of our electronics got super soaked. Taking a non-insulated boat into the cold climates had really caught up with us. You know how a cold beer gets covered in water drops in a hot climate? Well, this is just the reverse. Our heater kept the inside of Delos warm and toasty, but because our hull is not insulated, the humidity in the air and from us breathing condensed on the cool hull and created an absolute nightmare of moisture for Kaza. This is an interesting one like the whole mattress under where we sleep is like wet like wet to dripping wet that's like soaked basically and if you lift this up it has damaged the whole plywood board underneath it's just the last thing i want to do right now but this is living on a boat and because we don't have insulation this is what I have to deal with. Well, looks like I got this thing out of there just in time. Look how that bearing is starting to get rusty. That thing would have seized up. It would have been bad news. Jeez, that thing was in rough shape. The inner race just crumbled apart. It's just in pieces. And you can see the seal that failed is that one right there. So replace that, replace that bearing. We will be back in business. I'll order those parts tonight. Good morning. Good morning, baby helper. Oh, ducks. Do you see ducks? Oh, look at all those ducks, Nugs. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. Today's project is to get the anchor and the chain off Delos to get it regalvanized. We bought this chain in Thailand. Uh, when was it? Wow, 2015, so it's already been five years and it's really starting to rust. Uh, and before it goes too far, I'm gonna take it down and get it regalvanized. Galvanizing is the process of applying a protective zinc coating to steel or iron to prevent rusting. When the steel is immersed in the molten zinc, a metallurgical reaction occurs between the iron in the steel and the molten zinc, creating a protective layer. Now the chain weighs, I think, 250 kilos. I'm gonna go run a truck, and then I'm gonna have to find a way to get the chain from the dinghy to the truck and then take it to Baltimore. It's a lot of work, but it's cheaper than buying a new chain because I think new chain is about $1,700, $1,800. And they said the galvanizing should be around $250 to $350. So it's a huge savings. And it'll give us another uh, you know, lifetime of the chain if we keep on doing it like that. Uh, I'm gonna get in the dinghy and then we're gonna put the anchor on the dock. I'm just gonna swing it over. We're almost there. Yeah, go ahead and place it. Okay, full ease. Nice job. Okay, next we'll do the chain. There it is. Good job. Okay, so next we have to get this splice off. There's two reasons why we have this splice. So we have chain and then it goes to road. The first reason is that it extends our length. So it gives us another 20 meters if we need it. 
The second reason is if we get into trouble and we need to just, we don't have time to get the anchor up, we just drop everything, we go to the road and then we just cut it. Obviously, if this were an emergency, I would use one of our big sharp knives. Yeah. So I wanted to give a little update on how it's going on the condensation part. <laughs> After a few days, I was able to like, you know, just ziplock everything and make sure I dry everything out before I ziplock it. Ziplocked all the books, uh, all our clothes. <laughs> After doing that, uh, we actually got to borrow from Jeff and Cameron the Lifesavers. We got to borrow like a huge dehumidifier. I showed you the small one that we got, but I felt still running that one 24 seven, it didn't really do the job. So we borrowed one of the huge ones <laughs> and it's made a huge difference. You know, it's not damp, it's like dry. Oh, it's really nice to lay down. I'm happy I caught it at this point so it didn't damage more things and uh, that we can now crank away with this big one so we can hopefully suck out all the moisture over the next yeah couple of weeks and yeah I mean good spirits <laughs> it feels so nice to just kind of like have that off my mind uh, I was feeling quite stressed about it feels good <laughs> Go. We need that tile back down. Ah, all right. Well, there's no shortage of helpers today. There it is. Woo! All right. Cheers. Thanks for the help. Yes. Yes. God, we really earned that one, didn't we? <laughs> Here we are, Baltimore galvanizing. Uh, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, and Troutman, T-R-A-U-T-M-A-N. All right, uh, continuing on with the project list, I've come to the dive shop to take our dive tanks in for a uh, checkup. <laughs> Is this right in here, all right? We bought these in South Africa, I think in 2016. Uh, but we'd go ahead and like to do the hydro on them anyway. I better, I better check them first then. She just, <laughs> she just goes for it. You ready? Here's a big one. Jeez. Nugget navigates the stairs. Ah, little feet. Let's talk about our plans for the nugget. For this little nugget. What are our plans for you, nugget? Oh, jeez. So Sierra is growing pretty fast and I think uh, we have her sleeping in like a little tent, uh, which has been working absolutely great. And it's like a crib that we can take with us. It's super lightweight. It packs down to like this big. But I think in a couple of months, she will definitely have outgrown that tent. It's gonna be too small for her. Yeah. Uh, so we're thinking that she will move into the pass-through, so uh, we're gonna try to make a door. We're gonna build a door. <laughs> we're gonna build a door for the nugget yeah. right here. We already have one in the back that's the watertight bulkhead, and I'm gonna model it after the existing door because it's the same shape and same size. That will also clear up the forward cabin for if we potentially want some people to come and help More us. crew, we could have crew again. Yeah, exactly. So I bought this nice piece of marine ply to do this with. So I have plenty of wood and plenty of wood to make mistakes with. And I'm sure we'll come to that. 
All right, so here's the door from the back cabin. We're gonna try to replicate. It's not that complicated of a design. Okay, saw going on. good here. I'm just gonna trace this edge here. It's got it all lined up nice. to go have surgery this morning. I think years of uh, hard labor on boat projects and lately baby lifting have caught up with me and I have what's called a uh, umbilical hernia and I noticed it a little while ago and I thought it would get better but it didn't uh, and basically I have a defect around my belly button and my guts are trying to literally squeeze their way out. I have to go in for a little surgery I guess no surgery is little, but it's considered a minor surgery. Uh, they do have to put me under. I go under a general anesthesia. They do the procedure and then I'm out on the same day. The real bummer is that I'm going to be out of commission. I'm not allowed to lift anything, even Sierra, for like two weeks. That's going to be extremely hard with all the boat work we're trying to do. It's like the engine is basically taken apart. I'm going to have to get Kaza and uh, hopefully Bill... Um, to pitch in on some projects. We still have quite a few things to do. We only have one thing that is actually done. We were both kind of just like a bit stunned yesterday, I think, thinking about everything that needs to be done. And if we weren't kind of time pressured, I think it would be fine. But because my visa is expiring in like five weeks, that doesn't give us very much time to actually get everything done and then leave the country. Can I have a hug? Oh. oh. I love you too. I'll see you in a few hours. I'll be fine. I won't be able to lift you for two weeks. Can you believe that? Two weeks? I'm not able to lift her. That's sad. It's a little scary, um, but it's a good place to do it. And I uh, found a good doctor and they let me pay in cash since my insurance sucks and uh, figure, well, as long as Delos is going to get uh, all her projects done, I better uh, get myself sorted out as well so I'm healthy for, for the trip south. So Yeah, Brian is just going to do the surgery and it feels a little scary, to be honest. I don't know, it's never nice to need to, you know, be uh, go to sleep. For, even if it's just a quick surgery, it still feels a little scary, so... I love you. I love you too. Okay, bye. Up next on Delos, I head to the body repair shop to get my gut sewn back in and my Audi belly button turned back into an innie. Well, I am out of commission. Kaza is basically taking on all the duties of watching Sierra and continuing the boat project. She's kind of a super mom, actually. Kaza picks up the slack and starts her diesel repair apprenticeship. Yeah, there's quite a bit coming out, isn't it? And good old Ryan from North Carolina swings by to give us a much needed hand. I love the challenges that we, you know, get into every time we do work together. But not without our fair share of snags along the way. What the sh**? Oh, man. Like I usually sing to Sierra, you can't always get what you want, right? She hates that song. You know, try to get her on Cape Radis. <laughs> So after we, and uh, that. Uh, are you eating sand? <laughs>